action to recruit and save as many as they could from annihilation. Their population is moderate. At their peak, Ulm had between 40 and 60,000 members worldwide, mostly in Japan and Russia. Interestingly, Ulm leaders had ties to individuals high up in the Russian government, so some members were even allowed to practice combat strategies using official Russian military equipment. Their self-destruction stat is fairly high. If someone joined Ulm, they were almost never heard from or seen by their family while they remained within the group. Members are known to have undergone extreme survival training and challenges, some of which included hot immersion baths and the use of drugs and medications to increase their anxiety during the training. In some cases, members didn't survive the training. Sleep and food deprivation were common, and most were forced to listen to repeated audio tapes of Asahara for hours on end. Despite the extreme conditions in which Ulm members were expected to live, many still had great devotion to their leader. Many paid thousands of dollars to receive blessings from Asahara. Some even paid large sums of money to drink his blood, eat his hair, or wear headgear fitted with electrodes that supposedly transferred Asahara's brain patterns to the wearer. This all seems crazy, for sure, but what really makes Ulm's self-destruction stat so high is that Asahara expected his followers to take innocent lives for him. Throughout their existence, Ulm carried out planned attacks using nerve agents, mostly targeted at those critical of the group. But what they're most known for is their Tokyo subway sarin gas attack that occurred on March 20th, 1995. Prior to the attack, Asahara had caught wind that government agents were planning a raid on Ulm facilities. In an attempt to create a distraction for police and in hopes of sparking the Armageddon that he had prophesied, Asahara ordered five of his members to carry packs of sarin gas, a deadly nerve agent, wrapped in newspaper onto commuter trains. The packs were then punctured by the members, releasing the liquid onto the trains. The attack killed 13 people, seriously injured 54, and affected over 900. To Asahara's dismay, the attack did not distract police, and instead, government agents conducted huge raids of their facilities where they found stockpiles of chemical weapons, explosives, and drugs. As a result, 150 cult members were arrested, and in July of 2018, 13 cult members, including Asahara, were executed by the Japanese government. Their inconspicuousness stat is moderate. By the time Ohm conducted their subway attack, most people in Japan already regarded the group as a cult. The attack only further solidified their reputation as a dangerous cult. That being said, during their early years, most regarded the group as just a wacky new religious movement, but didn't see the group as dangerous. They were even granted status as a legitimate religious organization by the government, which can be largely attributed to the fact that, at the time, Japan had passed legislation to prevent the government from interfering with the religious liberties of their people. Without much government oversight, the group was able to grow into the dangerous cult it ultimately became. With moderate population and inconspicuousness stats, but a high self-destruction stat, Om Shinrikyo lands itself in B tier. In A tier, we have the first group to ever be labeled a doomsday cult thanks to sociologist John Laughlin's field study of and 1966 publication about the group. We're talking about the Unification Church, otherwise known as the Moonies. The church was founded in 1954 as the Holy Spirit Association for the Unification of World Christianity in Seoul, Korea by Sun Young Moon. Moon claimed that on Easter 1936, Jesus appeared to him and instructed him to continue the work which Jesus left unfinished after the crucifixion. Moon then wrote the Divine Principle, which was a text meant to fulfill the purpose of the Old and New Testaments of the Bible. Moon declared himself the Messiah, or Second Coming of Jesus, and believed that he was supposed to complete Jesus' work of restoring humanity to their correct relationship with God. He intended to replace mainstream Christianity with his unified version. The Moonies believe humanity can only be restored to God through a messiah, and that Moon was meant to replace Jesus because Jesus was killed before he could start a family. Basically, they think the Moon family is the established kingdom of heaven on earth, the chosen rulers to lead humanity into restoration with God. The group is known for their mass arranged weddings. The cult believes that undergoing the marriage ceremony places the couples being married into a sinless lineage. They believe that Eve corrupted the bloodline of mankind in the Garden of Eden when she was apparently sexually seduced by Satan, and that being placed in the arranged marriage by the church restores that lineage somehow. 
Moon arranged many couples himself, often creating mixed nationality marriages to promote unity between nations. The Moonies believed singleness should not be sought after and that everyone should be married. Their population stat is high, as their membership is estimated to have reached between 1 and 2 million at its peak. Their membership today is much lower, however, as the founder died of pneumonia in 2012 and the church is now split into two sects. One of these sects remained in South Korea and the other is led by the founder's son, Sean Moon, here in the US. Their self-destruction stat is moderate. The cult undermines the identity of their members by requiring them to have arranged marriages. Sex outside of marriage is one of their biggest sins that can be committed, and there's a large emphasis placed on purity and abstinence for the sake of keeping mankind's lineage pure. Members are also discouraged from having any friendships outside the church. Cult expert Steve Hassan, who I've spoken about several times on my channel, has revealed that during his time in the Moonies, he was expected to work 21 hours a day, seven days a week, giving lectures for the group, fundraising, recruiting, and praying. He dropped out of college just to join the Moonies and was taught that anyone on the outside of the group was just falling prey to Satan. Their inconspicuousness is also moderate. In their early days, it's likely that people just saw them as a new religious movement rather than a destructive cult. Today though, the Unification Church is widely known as a cult. They do have a special ability which allows them to overcome their reputation and maintain widespread influence, however. That ability is political alignment. This is the strong affiliation with and support of a major political party which allows the group to maintain influence within that party even when their influence elsewhere wanes. The Moonies have been highly political from the very beginning. Moon thought that all world governments should relinquish control to a worldwide theocratic government, presumably with he and his family at the top. He started multiple political organizations aimed at making progress toward that goal, but I'll just hit the highlights on that subject. Moon supported Nixon during the Watergate scandal. The church had George H. Bush speak at one of their political organization's events in 1995, where Bush championed traditional family values. The church founded the Washington Times, a conservative American newspaper, in 1982. The Washington Times has been known to publish pieces rejecting climate change, as well as articles promoting bigotry and conspiracy theories. Apparently, Ronald Reagan read the Washington Didn't Times like every day times? during his presidency. Really? What a surprise. Oh, right? no! And you want to know how much they support the GOP these days? Sean Moon, one of the church's leaders, holds what he calls a weekly King's Report, in which he discusses world affairs utilizing information from conservative media such as Drudge Report, Breitbart News, and Infowars. Sean Moon has said that Hillary Clinton is the... <laughs> that Hillary Clinton is the Fallen Eve character who would bring about nuclear war with Russia, and that Trump is the Adam character... <laughs> and that Trump is the Adam character who is bringing judgment on our government. The church believes that Trump has been chosen by God and that the Democratic Party is actually a communist party. To top it all off, Sean's brother, Justin, opened a store called Tommy's Gun Warehouse, which on its opening day <laughs> had Eric Trump, of all people, as the guest of honor. With their high population stat, moderate self-destruction and inconspicuousness stats, and a special ability which boosts their influence regardless of how poor their reputation becomes, the Unification Church earns a spot in A tier. Finally, in S tier, we have a group I've spoken about a good deal on my channel, and even ranked as B tier in my video about the most powerful cults in the world. You may have guessed it or expected it already, it's the Jehovah's Witnesses. This group originated in 1870s Pennsylvania, where they broke off from a Christian sect called the Bible Students. They became centered around their founder's publication company called Zion's Watchtower Tract Society and expanded quickly through the distribution of their literature and the preaching of their message. It wasn't long before they began doing what they're now famous for, attempting to predict the exact date for the end of the world as we know it. In the early 1900s, the Watchtower Society began to claim that the biblical Armageddon would occur in 1914, wherein God's messianic kingdom on earth would be established. They claimed this would entail Jesus returning to overthrow... It's not valid, I'll beat it in like three days or which, something. Which, of course, were all just ruled by Satan. That prediction failed, so they made another. And when that one failed, they just made another, and another, and another. These days, the Watchtower Society claims that Jesus' messianic kingdom was actually established on Earth in 1914, but only spiritually speaking. 
Physical Armageddon, on the other hand, will, you know, just happen any day now. Their population is very high, especially for a doomsday cult, with roughly 8.5 million members. Given that they're effectively led by a publication company, Jehovah's Witnesses are adept at evangelism all over the world. They have been encountering unprecedented financial issues over the past several years due to facing numerous charges for concealing